Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space War 1.8.1. When we last left this series, we were in the midst of a rescue plan to get two Kerbals from lunar orbit. Uh, these are contract rescues. And so we're aiming for Tomford first, who is in this very high orbit. And then we're going to try to get down to 10 top there. So that's two of the contracts. Melanie's going in the opposite direction, so we can't get to Melanie this time. And we've got 1,806 meters per second to do all this. Uh, right now we're using 364.6 uh, to try and meet up. There's a separation 1.4 kilometers there. So there's the maneuver right here. And then we'll meet up with uh, Tomford right there. And then we'll have to use another 37. So that's 400 there. And uh, that'll leave us with 1,400. So about 600 remaining to get to that low orbit, assuming 800 will be enough to get back home, which is tight. So, yeah, it's a bit of a question mark situation, but we'll see with Dumbles here. And so let's just go for the first one. Now, it's been a bit of a time since I last released a video in this series, and I'm pondering this because this is a test series. Basically, I'm sort of configured RP2000, and along the way we've had a bunch of issues. <laughs> there are things that I was not satisfied with, and I fixed uh, uh, some of them by adding new parts. But there's still a test series where I'm trying to figure out uh, how best to configure this thing. You know, a series that starts in the year 2000. And, you know, we landed on the moon, so we covered basically that part of things. And now we're in that void. Well, I mean, it's not really a void. Of course, NASA sent out probes and did Voyager and built a space station and all that business. Uh, but a lot of that doesn't have as much attractiveness in Kerbal Space Program as it does in real life. Now, of course, science is important to us, too. But so, you know, I'm, I'm just pondering. I, I think if, as far as this being a test of this career, I've got some information that I need to act on that, you know, to make it better. And I just haven't had the time to uh, act on it because that's going to be the work. Uh, basically... Uh, just playing around with it is not the work part. The work part is making it better. So, yeah, that I need to sit down and do. So, I can uh, keep going on with this career, but I think there's there are things that need to be done to make things better. So, I have been pondering that. There's uh, more science instruments that I want to make. That will help a little bit. I, I especially want to make science instruments that will will work on a station kind of context instead of just having the science lab, you know. Uh, but anyway, that's a long story. We'll see. I mean, picture greenhouses, you know, space greenhouses, but uh, you actually have to do research. Oh, I don't have the throttle set here. Okay, great. Um, you actually do research to improve the the efficiency of the greenhouse. That seems hard to do. So I mean, but but you, you can see where that's going, right? I mean, then then you sort of make a test greenhouse on the station, you know, just like they're growing lettuces and all that business on this on the ISS, and then eventually your greenhouse gets better efficiency. So. Yeah, stuff like that would be wonderful, but I don't even necessarily know how to do it yet, so. But a lot of the business has to do with fixing the contracts. We need a whole bunch of better contracts, and that just... I feel like I need to just do a whole revamp. Because I just imported the contracts from the old RP0 stuff, from 1.1.3 and 1.2.2, and... Yeah. Uh, obviously there are some deficiencies. In fact, uh, to avoid Tomford accidentally dying, we're gonna have Tomford uh, EVA immediately. It just occurred to me, at the end of the last episode, I think one of our Kerbals died. Oh, it was Fabian Kerman. Yeah, Fabian Kerman perished. due to some weird circumstance where Fabian was out of resources, I guess. 
Well, we haven't done anything to solve that. Uh, we just have to... I don't know what to do about that. I hope it doesn't happen again. I think having the Kerbals EVA a little bit earlier might help. I don't know. They don't come with any electric charge for some reason. They do have the food, water, and oxygen and plenty of it, really. Okay, board. Let's just make sure we transfer. So yeah, because we tried to get to Fabian but failed, we lost some propellant like that. So it's a good question whether we can get to Tantop at all. It's not a huge inclination difference. But it is a very big altitude difference. Uh, so that's 478. We can try. We can try, but it's going to be interesting. Okay, well, we're going to go for it. But if we use too much and we don't have enough to get back home, that's going to be trouble. Being in these weird inclinations around the moon, it's a little bit tough to predict. If you're perfectly equatorial, it's easy to tell how much it's going to take to get back to into Earth's atmosphere. But otherwise, it can be troublesome. 17 days with the two crew. I should probably think about what we do if we don't have enough to get back. I'm going to do a wastewater dump. <laughs> um, any any little bit to save us here. You'll hear them in the Apollo tapes doing wastewater dumps, and there is a good reason for that. And again, once we're in render range, I'm going to just go right to it and have the Kerbal EVA. It's probably safer that way. Okay, well, good enough. Let's jump over to Tantop. And immediately EVA Tantop. Okay, there's our craft. All right. Tantop's an engineer. Okay, grab, board, and transfer. Boo. So we got a pilot, scientist, and an engineer here. And we have 895 meters per second, but that's with this lander can. Now, the lander can doesn't have any supplies. We're just going to dump it right now. And we'll have a little bit of trash around the moon, but I don't want to use the Delta V to do anything more. So undock and separate. So now we have 1,027, and that's what we need to use to get back home. And I'm not going to waste any time with that. Let's just see. I mean, that's in 11 days right there. We've got 10, so here we go again. Um, we only need a better way of getting back than that. That gets us back in 5 days. So I think we have enough for that. That leaves us with... Uh, not much extra. Um, there ought to be a way to bundle it in somehow. Just not getting the right direction in the main burn. Let me see if I can get some other vector in the main burn to help this. Okay, well, it's not a huge amount of savings, but at least we're doing it all at once. So 944.3, we've got a huge radial and normal component to to it, but basically it's bundling the second burn that I originally had plotted that would have been out in Earth space and putting it all together in the burn that we're doing around the moon, but it doesn't save save us much. Okay, ignition. So this will just leave Melanie Kerman in orbit of the moon, and since Melanie is annoying enough to be going around the other way, we'll wait on that. I mean, we actually have quite a long time before the contracts are up. Only 7,000 days, like 20 years, so 
we're we're not in any rush. We can do other things now. But what other things? That is the question. Okay, that will do. All right. Heading out from the moon again. 10 days of supplies, 5 days to Earth. Doesn't seem like there's any problems, but you never know when this game can throw you a curveball. Okay, separating the service module. Dantop seems to be the only one whose camera is in the right position. Oh, that's Central America in front of us, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe we'll uh, hit Cape Canaveral, just, uh, well, not on this path we won't. We're not too far away. Could be like Georgia or North Carolina or something. Why does the water sometimes look like land? It's, uh, it's turned into a land texture suddenly. Hmm. This sometimes happens. Exceptionally clear water syndrome. Well, that's the way you know the pod's configured just for the moon. Maybe Mars, but... Mars would be a tougher one. Tantop's really enjoying it. Actually, uh, I, I guess they're all really enjoying it. Seems like a good crew. Okay, so... I don't know. Tennessee? I don't know. We're, we're sort of in the Appalachians. Somewhere between North Carolina and maybe Tennessee. Not the most convenient place for a pickup, but... Not too high, it seems. Okay, aero cap. All right, we are coming down at safe speeds here. The mountains are sort of over there in the distance. I mean, it's not that high. Nothing too troubling, but this looks like very, very cozy grass here. Okay, and recover. And... Mm. All right, we'll recover to VAB with this one. Okay, looks like the contract's out of the alarm clock and we got our money. So, all is well there. It might be that for the next step, we are just going to have to do some science and not rely on contracts. But let's see here. Um, new surface outpost on the moon. Antenna docking port can generate power, support 5 kerbals, 2,500 units of electric charge. That's not too bad. And the duration is great. I mean, at least they didn't ask for 2,500 units of liquid fuel or something. I think we'll accept that. Though, you know, landing on the moon is not cheap. But at least we don't have to return it. I mean, it's a surface outpost, so... Maybe not horrible. It depends on the pod that we use to contain them on the surface, isn't it? Okay. Uh, I, I, hmm. Because the pods are very expensive. That's not a rescue contract. Science data. Let's see. Is there anything else we can bundle up? There's a lot of rescue con Too many rescue contracts, really. They most fly by. I mean, we should be able to, right? We we don't have many active contracts. We'll do that. I mean, we've got time for that surface outpost one. We can just get the advance for now. Ten thousand days. So I'll pick that up because at least its requirement for what's at the surface is not crazy. I keep missing this human orbital one. Let's try the Phobos and Deimos flyby missions. Well. Gotta watch out for that 730 days. Let me see. Uh, when is our next opportunity? You know what? I need transfer window planner in here. Let me go and get that. Put that in here. We'll add that to the list. I'll have to remember to do that. 
but then we'll get a proper transfer window for Mars. Okay, let's take a look at the situation. Of course, we're going to have to build the rockets to get to Mars. And fly by Phobos and Deimos. Well, that looks like it's close enough. One hundred, uh, yeah, 191 days. Apparently we've got another Lynx S4 that's being built. I guess that'll be Melanie's, so unless we use it for something else. And we're recovering that one. There's some Mars probes here, but I think we'll build a fresh one. And yeah, I guess we can pick up the contract. What's the worst that could happen, right? So finally, uh, I mean, we've sort of delayed this quite a while. Uh, flybys of Phobos and Deimos. 730 days. We better have the comms. Failure is severe. It's something I'd like to fix. But, yeah, let's do both of them. Failure is severe, but not impossible to overcome. Oh, I guess there's a potential contract here for a Deimos orbiter, it looks like. Science Day from Space Around Deimos. That's a long duration. We should just pick that up. Satellite in a specific orbit of Deimos. Well, if we get there, that's a long duration one too. Okay, so I'm keeping it simple here. This is the Phobos flyby mission and we'll make an identical one for Deimos. It says that it's only going to take 10 days to build this, so we could probably build quite a few of them, assuming that this is good. Uh, we have the interplanetary communication dish Alpha, which I had added because we really needed a communication dish that could communicate from Mars, but it's just uh, direct, not a relay. We've got an extra battery, we've got the modern control core, which I added to the small rockets pack, and we're going with hydrazine on this because um, that's simpler, and we have the little RCS blocks to use hydrazine that will help us to get into a very finely tuned orbit around Phobos and, well, around Deimos, because that's where we need the finely, finely tuned orbit. We've sort of tried this sort of thing before, I suppose. I think we must have tried to land that probe on Deimos or something. Anyway, um, but we have the solar panels, they provide 100 watts minimum, it seems like. Um, the control core only needs 50, so that's 200 watts, should be plenty. And then we have another stage down here for MMH and MON3, that's uh, one ki uh, this one's a 1 kilonewton thruster, but hydrazine, this one's a 1 kilonewton thruster, and it is MMH MON3, and more efficient, obviously. This one only gets 214 seconds ISP, this one gets 314, much bigger nozzle. And the uh, appropriate RCS ports, and all that together uh, gives us, uh, well, th this stage here will capture us around Mars, and we've budgeted 2,800 for that. And then this stage up here is going to help us get around Phobos and Deimos, and we've got 1,700 for that. So I'm hoping one probe can do it, but we'll build an extra just in case. And so, yeah, that is the goal with the flyby and everything. And other than that, we're sort of using a familiar setup. Uh, we've got the Engine 2 vacuum here, which I guess for Rocket 1, I forget which company makes Rocket 1, but uh, let me see, uh, Launcher Space. Well, they said it gets 365 seconds specific impulse, so it's hard to resist. It's weird having a kerosene oxygen stage up here and a methane oxygen stage down here. Normally you'd expect that to be flipped around, but with this engine rated at 365 second ISP, which is not impossible, uh, engines have done that with kerosene and oxygen. Uh, I, it's just very good, so uh, we can use it as an upper stage. And then of course we've got the SE 2060s that we've used before. These are our usual methane oxygen engines. We've just got two of them here. And so hopefully that will be a good setup to transfer us over to Mars at the right time. So we are going to build one of these like this, and then we're going to do a Deimos flyby one. We'll just call it something different just to be sure. And 
Villages Time Warp until we get closer to the window. 191 days, we should do something else. But we've got uh, pod building anyway, we've got a Lynx S2 as well. In fact, uh, the these two missions can build in the second build slot while we're building the Lynx S2 in the first build slot. And it looks like all of it will get done by the window anyway. So that's good. Well, since we have some extra time and that second build slot, let me take a look at what else we need to get done. I mean, Mercury flyby. It's a flyby. Right? So... We just, we don't need to stop if <laughs> this is important, because it takes a lot to get into orbit around Mercury. But maybe a flyby is doable. We probably need like 6,000 meters per second to get over to Mercury. Let's see. It's probably not too much different from what we've got configured right now. Oh, wow, well, this looks like uh, 6,990 there. Travel time 110 days. Uh, if we, I mean, I don't think it would take more than that. Let's see. Um, fine, let's copy that alarm. So we've got Mercury window in 215 days there, and that takes 7,000 altogether. If we take a look at these Phobos Deimos flyby things that we've got, We don't need the fine-tuned thrusters on the top anymore, so we could probably just use another MH Mon 3 engine there. I mean, when we get beyond the requirement for low Earth orbit, which let's say it's 10,000 just for argument's sake, that leaves us with 7,730, which seems like it would be enough for Mercury, right? So, yeah, let's just build another one of these. By the way, here it said, well, that's because we're using the second build slot. Here it says 10 days, but that's for the first build slot. Okay, um, so fine, Mercury flyby. I mean, the dish should be fine. We've got some, the basic instruments here. So we'll get some signs, you know, the thermometer, barometer, and accelerometer. So, yeah, we'll just build another one of these. And try that. If there's something wrong with it, we have plenty of time until the Mercury window to fix it. Okay, and if we take a look at what Transfer Window Planner had said... I mean, uh, we're in the blue zone as far as the window is concerned, so it shouldn't be too bad. Alright, so rolling out Phobos flyby. Okay, I've minimized inclination to the moon, that just as a reference for the ecliptic. SAS on, throttle is up, and that's quite obviously wrong. <laughs> uh, that's not right. Uh, that's the fairing on top right there. Okay. Alright, ignition. And launch. Up we go. Fairly normal thrust weight ratio on this. I didn't do any fancy painting of the body or anything. I should make sure sort of a sure strut rocket pack or stuff. Uh, using the sure, sure strut engines, making a uh, a custom set of bodies for these for the rockets that I normally use, like the you know, single engine SE2060 or the one that we use for the Lynx pod to the moon. Right now the coloration using the recolor UI it's not exactly what I was looking for, so... Now mind you, even though we haven't experienced the pain and suffering of it recently, uh, these still are subject to test flight We've got ignition failure rates and rated burn times and mean times before failure, but they're, you know, more suited to modern engines than the engines of the 1950s and 60s. So they do pretty well, which is why we hardly ever get a problem, but then that only makes it more severe when we do. 
Oh, lots of G-forces on this one, though. Okay, separation and ignition. And might as well do the fairings now. Alright. If we figure another 3,400 for orbit, that leaves us with 4,000 for the transfer, so that's about what we were expecting. We can shut down there, 193 by 173, let's say. 4,000 meters per second as planned. Alright, well, let's see if the transfer actually takes 4,000 meters per second. Now, while we can check that the launch works, we can't really check that the probe will work when it gets there. Uh, that is something we'll just have to take a chance on. It says 5,000. That's not right. Um, it seems like from here we should wait like another 138 days. This seems like an extreme disagreement between Trans Window Planner and, and MechJeb. But I have to agree with MechJeb here. Just looking at it, normally you'd want to be only 45 degrees behind Mars. Why are we so far behind Mars right now? 64 days it can manage with 4,000 meters per second. Okay, I've managed something that gets us an encounter in 315 days. And that would be before we have to complete the contracts, very importantly. And let's see if this can manage to capture with a decent amount of delta V when we add everything together. That's a bare minimum capture right there. Uh, let's say Deimos orbit style. Uh, 1,500. So that's less than we budgeted for, right? Uh, of course, it's not all the way down to low Mars orbit, but we can manage that. So basically... Our initial burn takes 3,800, we'll assume that uses the entire stage because that's going to boil off anyway. We can't have that tag around. Oh, actually I wanted to see this here. Uh, have that tag around. We can't really keep it along. So 900 for the mid-course adjustment. That leaves us with 1,900 in that stage for the capture and we're only using 1,500. So it's a bit annoying, but it should work out. Let's just proceed. Let's get the solar panels out. It might be that we've unlocked a relay antenna that could work and we might want to replace some of these with one of those. We will see. Anyway, ignition. Ignition failure. Just when I mentioned test light, here we go. But uh, I think it was one of those temporary ignition failure. It can failures, it can actually permanently fail it. I think we have to activate it again. So we're a little bit late on the burn, but... And that might throw things off pretty substantially. It was a pretty touchy sort of thing, but... We'll handle that on the mid-course adjustment at this point. Yeah, uh, we found out that there is a way for test flight to kill the engine completely. But in this case, it did not. It just took an ignition away from us. Now, if we were almost out of ignitions, that would be a problem. Okay, kill rotation. And shut the... Oh, we went too far. Okay. Um, let's just use the RCS that we have here to fix that. We've got a reasonable amount. Well, we'll do the rest with the other stage. Turning back around. We're likely to get some impulse from the decoupler anyway. Okay. Well, yep, separation. Maybe I should have just kept pointed retrograde. We'll uh, fix this. Uh, uh, yeah, oh. Well, looks like I can't get rid of that. I don't know why I can't get rid of maneuver nodes, but we'll just replot the mid-course anyway. 
And I've been having trouble getting rid of maneuver nodes for some reason. Okay, well, that's good enough. That descending node is pretty close to the periapsis, which is nice. It's costing a little bit more than I had before, but it's good enough. It's time warp so it's in daylight. Oh, it is recharging. Oh, no, don't do that. You probably threw something off there, didn't you? Anyway, we've got this on its way to a mid-course adjustment, and hopefully everything will go fine with it. Uh, but with this on its way, I'll launch the other one in the next episode, and we'll continue on with this stuff then. And so we have another one for Mars, aiming for Phobos or Deimos flyby, and then we also have Mercury, our first Mercury launch. And we'll see if that works out for us. Anyway, uh, and I do have to remember to pick up that contract. I haven't actually picked up the contract yet. But okay, with all that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.